Hello and welcome. My name is Keith Parker, and if you're interested in spanning tree protocol or want to brush up, this is the perfect video to do exactly that. And here are our objectives for this video. Number one, I want to influence the way that STP works, spanning tree protocol. Number two, I want to walk through the prediction of the roles and the functioning of the ports. And then third, very, very important, I want to verify that we predicted it correctly. So as a starting point, here in my lab environment, I have one VLAN, that is VLAN 1 by default. And that's the VLAN we're going to be tracking spanning tree for in this topology. And I've also configured the switches to use rapid spanning tree versus the traditional 802.1D flavor. And that way it'll just converge a little bit faster for me here in my lab environment. And here's a quick primer regarding spanning tree. Spanning tree is going to identify one of these switches to become the root bridge. And if somebody wants to call it a root switch, that's also good too. And it's called the root bridge or the root switch because it is the root of the spanning tree. So these devices are all exchanging BPDUs. That's the bridge protocol data units used by spanning tree to communicate with each other. And as part of those BPDUs, as they're electing a root bridge, the decision point behind who becomes the root bridge is based on the lowest, like golf, the lowest bridge ID, which is a combination of the priority followed by the base MAC address. So currently I've got the default priority in place on all of these switches. And in this lab environment, the base MAC address on all these switches follows the numbering. So for example, switch one is going to be lower the base MAC address than switch two, and switch two is going to be a little bit lower than switch three, and three is going to be lower than four, and four is going to be lower than five. So in its default configuration here, switch one, because it's going to end up with the lowest bridge ID, because its base MAC address is lower than all the others, this will by default become the root of the spanning tree. However, one of our objectives is to influence spanning trees. So I propose for this demonstration, let's tell switch two that we want it to become the new root of the spanning tree for VLAN one. And in the world of Cisco, this is a very easy thing to implement here on switch two. So let's go to the CLI, the command line interface, and let's take a peek first of all at switch one to verify that it currently is the root, and then we'll train switch two to take over that responsibility. So prior to making any changes here on switch two, let's take a look at switch one and verify that it really is the root. And we can do it with show spanning tree, press enter, and we only have one VLAN currently in place. That's VLAN 1, and here's the spanning tree for VLAN 1. And sure enough, this bridge is the root because everybody's priority is the same, and this has a base MAC address of 5001, etc. And switch 2 has the 2 in that position here, and switch 3 has a 3, and switch 4 has a 4, etc. So for that reason, switch number 1, which has a lower bridge ID, which is made up of the priority followed by the base MAC address, because it has the lowest, just like golf, the best and lowest bridge ID, it becomes the root. And let's also go verify on switch two, with a show spanning tree here on switch two, that it is not the root. So here is the bridge ID on switch two, which is not as good as the bridge ID for switch one. And so switch two, which we're currently looking at, is not the root bridge for VLAN one, because it lost out for the election. So let's go ahead and change that. What we're going to do is we're going to go into configuration mode here on switch two, and we're going to say spanning tree for VLAN one. We want to be the root, and we want to be the primary player in that position. So currently this switch has this priority. It also knows who the root is and what the priority is of the root. And what this switch is going to do with this command, it's going to lower its priority so it can win. So let's go ahead and press enter, and it's done. So now if we do a show spanning tree, and we could tack on VLAN 1, but that's the only VLAN we have at the moment, and press enter. Now it's showing that this bridge is the root, and that's because it lowered its priority. So that command that we issued right here, spanning tree for VLAN 1 root primary, cause switch 2 to lower its priority in order to beat what was at the time the root bridge for spanning tree for VLAN 1. All right, fantastic. So now switch 2 is the root bridge. So I'm going to go ahead and label that. And also let me add a few other tidbits here. The default cost in spanning tree for a gigabit interface is a cost of four. So spanning tree's first order of business is to elect the root. I'm gonna write here bridge, but it also be called a root switch. And again, this is just specifically focusing on VLAN one. And next let's identify designated ports. And you may ask, well, what exactly is a designated port? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> designated port has two functions. Number one, it is forwarding traffic. So if there's data traffic that needs to be sent, it can be sent out of a designated port and it's forwarding traffic away from the trunk of the tree, or in other words, away from the root. And on a root bridge, the device that won the root bridge election, it is doing forwarding away from itself on all ports associated with that VLAN. So in this case, gig one slash zero would be a designated port. I'll put it here in blue. And also gig zero one would be a designated port. Again, that's forwarding traffic away from the root bridge. 
In every place in our network where we have two switches on the same segment, there can only be one designated port per segment. That's it. So I'll put right here one per segment. So if we hear the term segment in the context of spanning tree, just think of that when two switches are both connected to the same portion of the network. So for example, switch one and switch three are both on this segment here between them. Switch three and switch five are both on this segment between them and so forth. So as far as the prediction game goes, on the root bridge, it's easy to predict the designated ports that are forwarding away from the root. And that's because every port on the root bridge is a designated port and forwarding. So we'll come back to the designated ports here in just a moment on the other switches. Now, another piece that needs to be figured out on all the switches that are not the root, which is switch one, switch three, switch five, and switch four, they all need to identify one and only one root port. And again, we're focusing here on just one single VLAN, which is VLAN number one. So I'm gonna put an L here for losers, <laughs> just to think that these are all the switches that did not win the root election. They all need to identify one root port. And that's gonna be based on cost. And in spanning tree, everything that's lower is better. Like a lower cost is better than a higher cost. So as I mentioned earlier, each of the gigabit interfaces has a cost of four. So when the root bridge is sending out its BPDUs, the bridge protocol data units, it's advertising in those BPDs that are going out, it's advertising a cost of zero. It's effectively saying, hey, I'm the root, and it doesn't cost anything to get to me. And then the other switch is that they receive those BPDUs, they're gonna take a look at their own local interface. For example, switch four has gig one one, which has a cost of four. And it's gonna say, okay, for me to get to the root over gig one one, it's the advertised cost of zero plus my local interface cost of four. So effectively, my cost to get to the root is four. And the same thing is true for switch one. The cost to get to the root through this least expensive interface is going to be four. And we can take that same logic over here to switch three. Uh, switch three is being advertised a cost of four from switch one. Its local interface cost on gig zero plus three is four. So it would be a cost of eight using its best interface. Now we'll have to identify is its best interface, you know, zero three or two slash one. We'll take a look at that here in just a moment. And then switch five, let's predict what its cost to get to the root is. Well, if switch four is advertising a cost of four, plus its local interface cost of four, that would be eight. And if switch three is advertising a cost of eight, plus its local interface cost of four, that'd be 12. So it wouldn't use one slash three, that wouldn't be the best path. And the overall cost for switch five to get to the root would be a cost of eight. So let's bring back our discussion on all the non-root bridges, what root port they're going to use. So let's start with switch one. Switch one, if it goes this way, is gonna have a cost of four to get to the root. And because switch three is advertising a cost of eight plus the local interface cost of four, there would be 12 going through gig zeros too. So the best and lowest cost to get to the root from switch one would be using gig zero slash zero. And that's why zero zero is gonna be the one and only root port for VLAN one. So I'll put the root ports in red. And for switch four, its cost of going out one one up to the root would be a cost of four. So I'm predicting the root port is gonna be gig one one. And that's because switch three advertising a cost of eight here, plus a local interface cost on gig two zero of four would be 12, is cheaper to go through one one. So one one will be identified as a root port. And the root port is forwarding traffic towards the root, meaning the root bridge. And every switch that's not the root bridge needs a root port. So let's do switch five next as far as which root port it's gonna use. So on switch five, switch four is advertising a cost of four. Switch three is advertising a cost of eight. The local interfaces are both a cost of four each. So the cheapest way to get towards the root is gonna be right here. And that's gonna be our root port. And then we come down to switch number three. Um, it's being advertised a cost of four from switch one and a cost of four from switch four. Its local interface costs are also four each on gig zero three and two slash one. So which one is it gonna use? And that's a good question. So the first question regarding root port is cost. And because the cost is equal, now, even though these two switches, switch one, switch four, they did not win the root election. They're not the root bridge. They still have a bridge ID and they're also going to be unique. So as switch one advertises BPDUs down to switch three and switch four advertises BPDUs over to switch three, they're going to include their respective bridge IDs. So switch three is gonna say, okay, whichever one of you has the lowest bridge ID because the cost is the same, whichever one of you switch one or switch four has the lowest bridge ID, that's gonna influence my decision on which port gig zero slash three or two slash one I'm gonna use as my root port. Now, earlier I mentioned that the priorities on all these switches, except for switch two, which we just modified, they're all the same. And the base MAC address on the switches has been manipulated. Switch one has a lower bridge ID than switch four. And as a result, switch three is gonna choose this port, gig zero slash three, as its root port. Again, the tiebreaker being switch one having a lower bridge ID compared to switch four 
after the costs were identified to be equal. All right, so let's check our work. The root port, which is going to be forwarding towards the root, every non-root bridge needs one. And so we've got one here on switch one. We've got one here on switch three. We've got one here on switch five. And we have one here on switch four. So we're done with the root port selection, but now let's go back over here to the designated ports. Every segment of our network needs to have one designated port. That's a port that's forwarding away from the root. And so we've got one here on this segment, switch two as the root. All of its ports are designated, fantastic. And for the segment between switch one and switch three, we have a root port here on gig zero slash three, and that would mean that switch one is a designated port forwarding away from the root. So that's no problem. We have one designated port forwarding away from the root. We have a root port forwarding toward the root. That's fine, no worries. And then for this segment here between switch four and switch five, uh, we have a root port here, and R4 would be a designated port. And if we have a situation where we have two switches, for example, switch four and switch three, with this common segment right here between them, when they're making the decision and having a duke out regarding, okay, who gets to be the designated port for this segment, it's based on cost. So I'll put here blue for designated port. It's the lowest cost. So switch four says, hey, my cost to get to the root is four. Switch three says, my cost to get to the root is eight. And as a result, we'd expect this port on switch four to be the designated port for this segment. And let's do that same game here between switch three and switch five. So in this case, <laughs> both switch three and switch five have a cost of eight to get to the root. And so we can't use cost. So the next tiebreaker is lowest bridge ID. So regarding the decision regarding who gets to be the designated port for this segment, because switch three with its base MAC address has a slightly lower bridge ID than switch five, we would expect that this would be the designated port. So once we've identified the root with switch two and all of its ports being designated, once we've identified on the non-root switches the single and best root port to use, and we've also made sure that each segment has a designated port, all the other ports are going to be in a blocking state. So gig two slash one here would be blocking, and on switch five, gig one slash three would be blocking. So now that we have those predictions in place, let's go to the command line interface and see if we are right. All right, so I've got tabs open to all five switches, switch one, two, three, four, and five. So the prompts will change as we go back and forth between tabs. So here in secure CRT in the command window, I'm gonna go ahead and send my commands to all sessions. And that way they all get the same exact command. Let's do a show spanning tree and press enter. And then we can just tab through the various switches to take a look. So let's start here on switch two, which should be the root. And sure enough, here on switch two, it says this bridge is the root. And as a result, all of its ports regarding VLAN one are in a forwarding state. They're all designated and they're all forwarding because it is the root. Next, let's take a look at switch number one. So here at switch number one, we predicted the root port would be gig zero zero, which it shows right here. It also reflects that right here. And also gig zero two is a designated port. So far so good. Let's go on to switch number three. So here on switch number three, its root port should be gig zero slash three, which it says it is right there. Also confirms it right here as well. And on gig one slash two, it should be designated, which it is, meaning it's forwarding away from the root. And two slash one should be blocking. So I'm gonna go ahead and press enter here. And let's take a look at two slash one, just to verify that two slash one indeed is blocking, which it is. Great, let's go over to switch number four. So here on switch number four, its root port should be gig one one. So we can confirm that right here. We can also confirm that right here. Fantastic. And 20 and 22 should both be designated, which indeed they are. So we're just focused on the ports in our topology, but the switches have additional ports. So if we had a PC here on an access port that was in VLAN 1, for example, maybe that's port 3 slash 1, that port would also be a designated port, which means it's forwarding away from the root. So all of our clients, if we look at spanning tree, all of our clients in VLAN 1, all the ports they're connected to are going to be designated ports on VLAN 1. All right, and let's take a look at switch number five. So here's switch number five. We predicted that the root port would be two slash three. Shows right here that it is. That's the root port. And if we go down a little bit in the output here, this also confirms the root port. We also identified in our predictions that one slash three should be blocking, which if we look at one slash three, indeed it is right there. So if you want a little bit more or even a lot more regarding the spanning tree, just go to my YouTube channel and search on my channel for spanning tree or STP either way. And you're going to have dozens and dozens of additional options and training regarding spanning tree. So I'll see you, my friend, in the next event. Until then, be well, be happy and be kind to everybody.
what you're putting in. 